family and friends this is mommy of two wife of one i'm so glad that you guys joined me for another week of talking about being a mom and a wife and i have a special guest with me today as you can see this is my mommy hi everyone we're just going to call her pastor because she is a christian past pastor um, i brought her on today because i wanted to talk to her about her experiences as a wife and a mom i've talked to you all before when i did my anniversary video that i've only been married for two years and my mommy has been married for 33 years so i wanted to kind of get her her take on what it means to be married what it means to be a mom what it means to be a grandma and you know whatever else she wants to talk about so mommy are you ready yes all right so the first question is what are some lessons you learned in your first year of marriage that still ring true today? Well, um, thinking back, that was a long time ago. I've been married 33 years now. Um, in the first year, um, one of the first things I learned was that um, I couldn't have my way with everything mm -hmm. I wanted. I am uh, grew up as an only girl and uh, the youngest in my family and I was a little spoiled, a little entitled. And uh, as a matter of fact, my father even told my husband, um, your dad, on our wedding day that I was spoiled. And so yeah. he always reminds me of that. And so I learned that I couldn't have my own way, that I had to um, compromise. And uh, that what he thought and what he uh, wanted and the things he desired mattered as well. And so I have to remind myself of that today. Now it comes more natural than it did in that very first year, obviously. Of course. Okay, well, that's a very good lesson to learn that I think all men and women should remember. Absolutely. Is marriage, true marriage... Well, no, that is very true. Is marriage what you thought it would be? Well, you know, I got married actually um, young by today's standards. I was 25 when I got married, and um, I had a fantasy of what I thought marriage was going to be, that I was going to be roses and flowers and kind of like dinners. I'm a bit of a romantic, being a poet and all. And uh, that was one of my major disappointments in the beginning was that I married someone who was so not like that. That was so not his 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 way of uh, showing love and romance. And so that was a disappointment. Um, I I liked that. I wanted that. And so I I dreamt of those things. Um, and always I also thought initially that everywhere I went that he would be there. That I would never have to worry about going somewhere by myself, that it would always be me and my husband. But I learned that everywhere I wanted to go, everywhere I wanted to go, he didn't want to go. Um, and so I realized that, it, you know, don't force him if he don't want to go. Um, and also that even though we were one, we also still had separate uh, likes and separate um, uh, hopes and things that we could come together as one, but we still were individual people. And so um, I had to learn that. and. I'm not disappointed anymore because I, I told someone this recently. I learned that my husband le uh, loves the way he loves. Mm -hmm. My idea of loving was sending me the flowers at work for anniversary or just because or, or taking me to a candlelight dinner or cuddling with me and so forth. But I had to learn that the man that I married, the individual unique person that he is, his way of love, one of the ways he shows me love, is to see a bill come in the mail and to quietly pay it and not tell me. And for me to find out that this is paid in full, I found out that that's a way that he loves. And I love that about him now. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> that was a great thing. But I had to learn that and had to appreciate him for the way he is, for the way that he loves. So it sounds like his love language was is acts of service. Yes, he's definitely and, a servant. No question about that. He likes okay. to serve me and serve others. Now, I talked about love languages in one of my earlier videos and the importance of knowing how your spouse wants to be loved and understanding how you want to be loved and being honest with your spouse about that, having a conversation about that. The Love Languages book I know wasn't written when you all first got married, but have the two of you since read the book and figured out what your love languages are or did that come through trial and error? Well, I'll be honest with you. Someone actually gave us that book at a church event years ago. We never read the book, uh, you know, honestly. Um, it came through just knowing, uh, knowing each other and still actually learning that. I think as long as you live with someone, there's always something new to learn about them. Um, I know that his love language is men. I mean, the Bible even tells us that women want to be loved, men want to be respected. And so learning to know what makes a man feel respected or disrespected. Mm -hmm. um, when you disrespect a man, you cut him to the very core of his being. And um, I think a lot of times as women, we don't really realize that some of the things we say um, and do 
um, disrespects him. So, and, and I have a husband who likes to be needed. So his love language is, you know, when you need something, you need your oil changed, let me change your oil. Right. When you need um, uh, the grass cut, don't get the neighbor's child to do it, let me do that. I mean, that's his love language to be, he likes to be needed, he wants to be needed, he needs to be needed. And the, to him, it's disrespectful to go above his head and choose someone else when he's right there to do it. So I had to learn that and I, and that's, that has really worked for us. Okay, cool. Now, how has your marriage changed just in the last decade? I know you've been married for over three decades, <laughs> oh, so wow. we won't go over all 33 years how it's changed, but just from now to, well, not from now, but from 2005 to now, how has the marriage changed? Well, it's interesting um, you say that because this last decade has been a huge change in our marriage because uh, when I first, when we first got married in 1982, I was, we were, neither one of us was saved. We both grew up in the church and knew about God, but we didn't know God and we didn't have a relationship with God. It wasn't until you guys were, were, were young that we started um, really um, walking with the Lord. And somewhere along the way, um, the Lord called me to pastor and he didn't sign up for that and neither did I. And so that happened 10 years ago, as a matter of fact, in January, I'll celebrate my ninth year of pastoring. So in the last decade, the biggest change has been the fact that um, I am pastor of church. He's a deacon of the church. He's a servant. Um, a lot of our conversations now are about church and about people in the church. That's a huge part of our life now. But it doesn't detract from, matter of fact, that it's brought us closer together because we've had to both adjust to that new um, um responsibility and has also caused us both to together seek the Lord more together and both individually so that has been a huge huge change uh, when that neither one of us saw coming but God has certainly been with us through this okay and let's see if the final question I have here have your views on marriage or motherhood changed since your own child has become both the mother and the wife this is you say that if I can kind of just talk you know bust you out a little bit um of I was Thinking about this earlier today, my child is going to be 34 years old in a few hours. And um, I was like, wow, you know, my child's going to be 34. I remember when you turned 30 and uh, mm -hmm. your grandmother said to me, I can't believe my, my baby's baby's turning 30. And um, I thought, I'm starting to feel a little bit how she feels because the years just go by so, so fast. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, when I see how you deal with your children, you know, if I can be honest and transparent to people who know me, those who I passionately know me, I'm a very transparent person. Sometimes it makes me a little sad because I wish that I had been as attentive to you and your brother as you are to your children. I mean, I had some stuff going on and things that the Lord had to deliver me out of that, that didn't allow for that when they were the ages that uh, your children are. But I'm very proud um, watching you be so attentive and so very patient with your children. I see a teacher in you. Um, I know you always deny that, but it's there. Yeah. And it, it, I see it through that. So it just really reminds me um, of how I wish I could have been, but I'm grateful that you were able to see the change in me because that's another lesson learned. Uh, you, you, you and your brother were able to see how God has changed my life and changed our lives for the better. It also lets me know, you know, I didn't do such a, a horrible job because you're a great mother. So if something must have been poured into you that was good yeah. so it really is a testament your children are very fortunate to have that and i'm always praying that um you, you you all will continue as you are and that god will continue to be a huge huge part of your children's lives okay and also part of the question was about wife being a wife. wife being yeah. a wife if your views being a on, wife. yeah being a wife has that in any way changed your view on marriage or has it you know what seeing you be a wife you mean yes seeing me be a wife well, I mean, it's interesting you say that. That's not how I keep saying that. But um, mm -hmm. I'm still f working on that, figuring that out. I think, um, you know, I kind of smile a little bit at, at, at um, when I see the wife that you are. One thing I, I, I really admire that you are very expressive with your love, um, with your your husband. You're very devoted and very dedicated. You're a lot more patient than I than I was. <laughs> um, in some areas um, and there's some things that I just know that you'll learn as you go along um, that God will show you um, so and being your mother of course all mothers they don't want to see anybody hurt their children I mean you're right. still my baby though you're a mother and a wife you're still my baby and you, you're fortunate to have a husband who loves you but 
from a mother's standpoint, you're always sort of watching and being your cheerleader and saying, okay, just make sure you don't get hurt. Make sure you make decisions that are right for you, that don't tax you. And so right. um, that's where that is. But I do admire seeing how uh, the same attention that you give your children, you give your husband. And that's a great balance. The fact that you yeah. found that balance early on is great. Not everybody. So there are people who are married for years and never find that balance. So, you, so you're doing So you keep doing what you're doing. And you know what I always say, keep doing what you're doing and add it to that. The most important thing of all is to have God be in the middle of it and to do it the way he says do it. And it'll even be even better than it is right now. Okay. Well, we've reached the end of our question answer period. So is there any last minute advice or words of wisdom or anecdotes or scriptures, anything that you would like to give my adoring public? Well, I just want to say this. Um, family is so important to God because he set it up. He says that he desires, for he says in the book of Malachi, that his desire is for a godly man to marry a godly woman and the two of them would have godly children. That is God's model for family. And so there is no strong family. There is no successful family. There is no successful mommy or daddy or, or children without God being in the center of, of their lives. And so I pray that your viewers will see that and understand that, that with all as busy as we are today, that we've got to make that a priority, that the family prays together, um, that, uh, that, that, that you find a church home where Jesus Christ is Lord and where you're nurtured and cared for uh, biblically. And that would make, that would be such a radical thing if we would all just make sure that God is who we are following, who we're modeling, not the things we see in pop culture and music and all that, but, but the, the word of God that is, that never goes old, never old fashioned. Um, families near and dear to me. I, I, I love counseling families. I love talking to families because I know that that is where the strength of God's purpose flows out of. It flows out of family. So, God, first, family, and then living your purpose. Amen. All right. Amen. Word to your mother. Okay, so <laughs> thank you all. I'm proud of my so daughter. Much. Thank you for giving me a chance and allowing me an opportunity to, to have my say. That means a whole lot to me. Oh, of course. My pleasure. So thank you all for another, well, hopefully you took the time to actually watch this video for another week of Mommy of Two, Wife of One. If you all have any questions, if you would like to submit any topic ideas, please send me an email at momof2wifeofone at gmail.com. That's mom of the number two, wife of O-N-E at gmail.com. And again, this is Mommy of Two, Wife of One. This is my mommy, the pastor, and I'll see you all next week. God bless you. Keep watching.